Hi, this is Gautam. Welcome to the fifth episode of Atlas Agenda and today we are going to look at Greenland. So, the issue with reference to Greenland is the diplomatic tussle with United States of America. Like last week, uh, just before, just after we recorded the video, uh, there was the arrest of Nicolas Maduro. And the United States is quite ambitious in expansion. That is a news article. So a simple overview on where it is located. So Greenland is politically part of Denmark. And Denmark is a European country. And United States of America has expressed interest in acquiring Greenland uh, both through financial measures and legal measures, uh, wanting it to be the 51st state of the United States. The major reason, which is uh, told by the United States of America, is that uh, for securing uh, security, security interests, because to the eastern part of Greenland, there is a greater activity of both uh, Russian and Chinese vessels. So that is the news article. And uh, now let's focus on the island in terms of map perspective, how it is going to be helpful for our prelims examination. So, you know, any time uh, you want to study countries, we directly go to the world political map. But Greenland is more like a kaleidoscope, right? So I'm pretty sure all of you use these in school. So once you start to look at it in different perspectives, the position begins to change and you get incredible colors. Greenland is one such place. Look at this map. If you look at the size of Greenland, two-thirds of which is in Arctic Circle, and look at the size of Africa, you will come to a conclusion that uh, Africa is, yes, it's bigger than Greenland, but one way or the other, they are maybe, uh, it's maybe two, double the size of Greenland, not more than that. But in reality, Africa is much larger. The reason of this distortion is because of Mercator projection. And in Mercator projection, the areas which are closer to the equator will become smaller and areas which are closer to the polar region get exaggerated. So Greenland is 1 14th of the size of African continent that actually tells you that this is much larger and this is extremely small. Now let's look at this kaleidoscopic island to a different perspective, the first map which I showed you. So Greenland is geographically part of the North American continent positioned to the northeastern part of Canada. But if you look at it politically, politically it is part of Denmark. Denmark is right here. Greenland came under Denmark's control in 1721 and even though Greenland has you know, acquired greater autonomy, when it comes to important subjects like external affairs, defense and foreign relations, it is predominantly controlled by Denmark. So that's one thing you have to keep it in mind. Now, if it is a continental area and if it is a political boundary, I would have started talking about the neighboring countries. But this time, we are not concerned about neighboring countries. We are going to focus on what islands are close to Greenland. At the same time, what are the water bodies which are around Greenland? This will help us for our prelims examination and that is going to be our predominant focus in this episode. Now, that is the position of Greenland with reference to North America. And the first island which we need to note down is Iceland. Iceland is a European country, but again, it is located far away from mainland Europe towards the northwestern side. And with reference to North America, it is on the northeastern side. As you can see from the map, Greenland and Iceland are separated by a narrow water body. A narrow water body which separates two large water bodies is called as a strait. And the name of this strait is Denmark Strait. So where does the, what does the Denmark Strait connect? Well, to the northern part of Denmark Strait, you have the Greenland Sea. And to the southern part of Denmark Strait, you have the Labrador Sea. Okay, and the larger part of the Atlantic Ocean. So keep that in mind. Even though the name is Denmark Strait, it's present closer to Greenland, not in Europe. So that's important for your prelims exam. Coming to the second strait, we have the Davis Strait here. The Davis Strait is again a narrow water body, which is connecting two water bodies. So one is the Baffin Bay. And after the Baffin Bay, in the south, again, you have the Labrador Sea and the larger part of the Atlantic Ocean. And lastly, the third strait which we are concerned about, pardon me, the third strait which we are concerned about is here. That is your 
narrow strait. And your narrow strait connects the larger part of your Atlantic Ocean through your Lincoln Sea. And Lincoln Sea is connected to your Baffin Bay. So that is your water passage. So keep that in mind. We look at it in a zoomed out version. If you try to trace the route, so this is where you have Labrador Sea, this is your Baffin Bay, and that is your Greenland Sea. So if you trace the route of ships, it's possible to access your Arctic Ocean through this way, through your Davis Strait and then your Nair Strait. It is also possible to access your Greenland Sea and then finally your Arctic Ocean through this way. And keep that in mind, you have access through the Pacific Ocean, through the second line which I am drawing right now. That is why your three straits, your Davis Strait and secondly your Nair Strait and thirdly your Denmark Strait are relevant for your exam. Now, we will look at the same island in a different perspective to assure ourselves on the passage of water. Same diagram, sorry, same country but in a different perspective. So we have Denmark Strait again. Going to Greenland Sea, we have your Davis Strait to Baffin Bay and then you have your, there you go. Then you have your Nair Strait traveling to Lincoln Sea. So you have two such water passages surrounding Greenland. So you have Iceland here, you have Baffin Island here, and then you have the Ellesmere Island of Canada. So since we have looked at it in position, if we are able to identify the exact position of straits and water bodies, it will definitely be helpful. So just a simple recall before we go to the second and third discussions. So we started with your Labrador Sea, keep that in mind. So Labrador Sea is a larger part of the Atlantic Ocean. So this water body is connected to your Baffin Bay. Think in terms of water here, that's your Davis Strait. So Labrador Sea is connected to Baffin Bay with your Davis Strait. And then your Baffin Bay is connected to your Lincoln Sea by your Nair Strait. That is your Lincoln Sea. And on the other side, you have the larger part of Atlantic Ocean. So there you go. And uh, this is connected. You know, Labrador Sea is part of the Atlantic Ocean. So this large water body is connected through a narrow water body again. This narrow water body, we call it as Denmark Strait. This Denmark Strait connects to your Greenland Sea. Greenland Sea. And that Greenland Sea and Lincoln Sea are part of the larger Arctic Ocean. So that is our discussion. And keep that in mind. This is where you have Greenland. That's the land right there. We only have water body shaded. So Denmark Strait is between Greenland and Iceland. Right here, keep that in mind, we have Baffin Bay. So we have an island of the same name, Baffin Island, which belongs to Canada. And uh, on the northern part of uh, Canada, we also have the second island called as Ellesmere. So E stands for Ellesmere. And uh, finally, I stands for Iceland. B stands for Baffin Island, as the bay simply mentions, and then G stands for Greenland. So when you prepare, if you can comfortably draw this diagram, then you know that these are my water passages. And there is no confusion if there is a prelims question on which strait is connecting which two water bodies. And now, we want to look at Greenland from the Arctic Circle perspective. Students online, the Arctic Circle, as all of you know, is 66.5 degrees north. And uh, you will see that the main reason why United States of America is concerned, or they seem to be concerned, is because of the fact that if you look at it from the Arctic Circle perspective, on the other side, we have a large territory of Russia, that is your Russian coastline. 
fine. So Russia is already close to the United States of America through Alaska. And uh, the Americans say that when it comes to your Denmark Strait and Greenland Sea, there is increasing activity of vessels. That's right where Iceland is located. At the same time, there are chances that as glaciers begin to melt, as more, more and more minerals become exposed, it is very much possible for foreign countries to use these resources. So that is the idea behind which the United States is quite aggressive towards Greenland. And lastly, I just want to close the discussion of prelims perspective through this simple route. So I had mentioned about the location of your Davis Strait right there. And if you move north towards your Nara Strait, you're reaching your Arctic Ocean. But if you travel towards the western side from Baffin Bay, so here we are, that's your Labrador Sea. So Labrador, Labrador region in Canada. So from Labrador Sea, you're taking your Davis Strait. From Davis Strait, you're traveling towards western side. You will cross through Victoria and Banks Island. And after crossing through the Victoria and Banks Island of Canada, it is possible to reach Pacific Ocean. This is the famous Northwest Passage. And keep that in mind, students, online. Uh, it's very much possible that as glaciers begin to melt, this might become very active, providing a lot of shipping vessel routes between your Atlantic Ocean and your Pacific Ocean. Keep that in mind that this discussion will continue for your mains perspective also because there are a lot of geopolitics involved, especially on the power balance between United States of America, European Union and the future of NATO. So in, in, in Atlas Agenda, we mostly restrict ourselves to prelims discussion, but still I wanted to make a simple call on the importance of mains also. And uh, before we close and I show you the final question, just want to introduce something. In the previous video, we had asked a question regarding countries which border both Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. Students did not have a problem with Colombia. So Colombia has access to both Pacific Ocean and Atlantic Ocean through the Caribbean Sea. So north of Colombia is Caribbean Sea and through Caribbean Sea, yeah, right here, it's through Caribbean Sea it is possible too. Caribbean Sea is part of the North Atlantic Ocean. But uh, when it came to Chile, there were different answers. Few students have chosen only one, few students have chosen only two and there were doubts about Chile also. Please note here, Argentina is a broken country, you can clearly see in this map and Chile has a very small coastline, extremely small coastline. That is because of the Strait of Magellan right there. So you see that Chile extends, so it's a small coast, it's teeny tiny bit but still extends and has access to the Atlantic and only the tail uh, belongs to Argentina, that's Tierra del Fugo region. Fine. So I think that resolves the dispute uh, regarding uh, doubts on Chile bordering Atlantic Ocean. So I close the discussion uh, with this question and uh, you might be thinking every single time uh, I always mention what you focus on determines what you miss. So the question is very simple. Who are the members of the Arctic Council? The numbers stated are European Union, United Kingdom and Ireland. And let me tell you something. Many might feel it's not a map question, but it is actually a map question. So in, your, in the comment section, when you leave the answer, do explain if you know why this is actually a map question and it's not an international organization's question. What is the criteria to become a member of the Arctic Council? You can leave that in the comments. So again, the next video will be uploaded as usual on Wednesday 6.30 p.m. And before I close, if you're looking, looking at this video, it's most likely Wednesday evening or Thursday or Friday. So, Pongal Nalwarthukal. With that, I close. Thank you.